In terms of starting the early phase of our rehabilitation, it's really important to start with gaining pelvic position awareness. So a lot of our um, athletes will have very poor understanding of neutral pelvic position and will either sit fixed in a posterior pelvic tilt or an anterior pelvic tilt, and this will affect their um, abdominal function and their ability to create stiffness in the pelvis. And it's really important to have that stiffness and then have the, um, the, the legs working from a stable base in order to optimize that linkage of the kinetic chain, but also to dissipate the forces so they're not uh, localizing over the pubic um, attachments of say their adductor muscles or their rectus abdominis, depending on what their presentation is. So I spend a bit of time working on teaching them um, that abdominal sort of stiffness, abdo uh, pelvic position, but also that lateral pelvic position. So I think we've got a video here, Liam, where we, we use things like um, the hip hitch to try to re-educate that lateral pelvic position. Mm -hmm. And I use a lot of the single leg activities to try and teach athletes how to stabilize over their leg without getting that um, body shift so that they're actually having to use their hip adductor muscle, abductor muscle group, AB, um, in order to stabilize their, their pelvis over their leg. And it's also in synergy with their adductors. So it's a bit like um, what you see with a ballet dancer where they're, they're wanting to maintain that stability over one leg without getting um, sway, movement yeah. of their of their upper body or or of their pelvis. Yeah. So often with these kind of uh, any kind of the clinical entities, and you'll see from Pear Holmick's you know twenty five year old paper now that the commencement of rehabilitation included isometric contraction. So yeah. well before. Um, Cook and Perdom's yeah. um, paradigm of, of the tendinopathy, clinically that was seen as something that can modulate pain. So um, for say a psoas related groin pain, I will use a hip flexion isometric mm -hmm. and for a ductal related groin pain, just pop a, a soft ball in between the knees and use isometrics to modulate pain and to do and to um, commence that early phase of loading within the rehabilitation program. And yep. typically I will uh, do 30 seconds, three reps, four times a day. That's my typical prescription for so, isometrics. Yep. So hip flexion again, um, we can see from this video, really handy for our office workers. They can yeah, just, just um, the pop their yeah, knee under the desk. Some <laughs> like to use the hand, but I've had patients who um, that can make them sore because they're actually having to use the abdominals yeah. quite a lot when they're doing that. So I prefer it to be more isolated and just use the desk. And um, yeah, the old chi ball works really, really well or a, a slightly flat rugby ball or, or um, soccer ball. And the only really reason well. for not using it well inflated is discomfort against the legs, against the epicondyles. Just gives them something more to um, to push against, yeah, 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 rather than something something hard. And you want their knees to be hip width apart as well. Yep. You don't want them into too much um, abduction for that yep. isometric. And then quickly progressing on to um, isotonic type actions. So it's surprisingly hard to lift yeah. your leg against gravity and side lying. Um, so often you'll find this will be enough load in the early stages, um, but it's really easy to add an ankle weight and just a little tip and trick is if they've got a long sock and they don't have a, one of those sand based ankle weights and then you just put a sock on and then chuck a little dumbbell and then you can progress really nicely through um, the weight and that gives it a long lever as well so it's actually quite high even with one kilo mm. um, in the sock can actually increase the, um, the loading quite nicely yep. and then progressing um, very clearly into more resistance I like to use uh, cable resistance in standing Again, um, you can see from this video where um, you use the stick for balance, yep. really working on that stabilizing over the standing leg. The reason why I like the cable resistance is because it's much easier to progress load. So yep. if they don't have access to cable, TheraBand's fine, but it's really, you have to be really consistent about the, obviously the color of the TheraBand, yeah. how far away from the, um, from the, uh, the fixation point they are, the speed of the movement, whereas with the cable, then you can use something like a metronome to, yeah, to really control the load and progress the load really carefully as the, as the um, 
the symptoms dictate. Um, and then, you know, quickly move them beyond the cable into something more functional like the Copenhagen adduction exercise. It is really important to, um, to build load and because athletes, the loads that they're going back to with their sport, we have to try to replicate yeah. that in our rehabilitation program. So if we look at the Copenhagen adduction exercise here, we know, as I mentioned before, that increases trunk endurance or also increases abduction strength as well as at eccentric adduction strength. So fantastic exercise. Often uh, athletes will struggle with the long lever. Yep. So it's really bent important to start with the bent knee and, <clears throat> um, and particularly anyone that has had any kind of medial knee pain, it's really important to have that knee supported. And you can, you can add, uh, again, add weight to that lower leg in order to increase the load for the, for the adduction exercise. And using things like slide board, you can start with very um, short range of motion, mm -hmm. but it's, it's an essential, essential component of the rehabilitation to gain that confidence in using the stretch shortening cycle of the adductor muscle group, but yep. also to develop that confidence to change direction and just that functional, um, functional time A bit training. of power. Yep. And power, yeah, and speed, and yep. yeah, and you can start with this very low range of motion, develop the confidence as they start to improve and get stronger. I mean, just gradually increase range of motion, increase the speed, increase the the depth of the squat, and and you can almost turn it into a bit of a cardio um, yeah. program. Yeah, they as find well. it a bit more fun. It seems, yeah, it seems that way. So if you're looking at a uh, iliopsoas related um, groin pain, mm -hmm. same principles, starting with the isometrics knee under the desk, moving to the isotonics with um, something like a cable, and then eventually using um, the reverse Nordics to get the eccentric uh, hip flexion activity. And it's really important not to miss out that final step. If we if we don't perform those um, final eccentric training, it's really common, particularly in a kicking-based sport, to get recurrence in our um, hip flexor tendon problems. Yeah. And the other thing to be aware of, particularly um, psoas-related groin pain very commonly uh, occurs with hip-related groin pain as well. So when we're doing the isotonic um, hip flexion exercise, I tend to keep the knee at around 60 degrees of hip flexion, try to keep away from that 90 degrees because it can be provocative, particularly when the psoas related groin pain coexists with hip related yeah. groin pain. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, we can start hip extension strength very early using things like TheraBand, but we need to move very quickly. Um, you know, the glutes are big muscles. We need to really gain <clears throat> good strength. So moving into cables and then progress um, things like bridging with, uh, with, with weights right. over the pelvis. Hip thrust, I love the hip thruster you can do. Um, double leg with bars, single leg with the bars, and it's a really, again, it's a power-based kind of exercise. The only thing to be aware of is just to try to um, give the cue not to fully lock out the hip, particularly in athletes with hip dysplasia, because they really don't like that overextension of the anterior aspect of the hip. It's a great tip. Um, and squats uh, often good to use front squats rather than back squats in order to um, to, uh, to control the trunk position. And as we talked about before, using a box or something to ensure that they don't go too deep. But they can really, so you want that hip flexion to be um, 90 degrees or more, but they can really load up squats. So even if they're not doing such a heavy range, or lo uh, loaded range, then you can actually really increase the amount of load on the bar. So they yeah. can actually get a really good impetus in towards their, um, their posterior chain yeah. without necessarily aggravating the, the hip joint if, if they've got hip related groin pain. Core function mainstay of all <laughs> hip and groin related rehabilitation. I, Hope I've emphasised yeah. that enough. You're a cool believer. Um, so important to use things like planks because again you can gain abdominal function without overloading our hip flexors, which are often become overactive, particularly with hip related groin pain, but, all, but with all, all groin pain, it's really common to have overactivity of our hip 
um, hip flexion unit and lack of activity of our lower abdominal unit. So and are you progressing that plank into movement of either arms or lower limbs during it or leaving it just as a plank? Yeah, I like them to be able to do three lots of one minute before I'll start progressing. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, then maybe moving legs out and, and in, um, tapping arms, yeah. um, moving forward and backwards over your shoulders just yeah, to yeah. increase the, the load Next and step. also make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah. It's really hard to sit for three minutes doing a front plank. Um, I'm same with, now. <laughs> yeah, same with the side plank. Um, they can lift their lift their leg up and down, yeah, and yeah. Um, you know do some do some rotations to increase some complexity yeah, of the right, motion. Right, right. Um, this little video down the bottom um, is showing eccentric rectus abdominis or eccentric um, abdo upper abdominal work. So that's something that you might want to do for an inguinal related mm -hmm. um, groin pain towards the end stage. And then this other video is just showing upper abdominal in a way that can um, reduce hip flexion activity. So you try to get the athlete to go up towards the ceiling rather than doing a flexion. He's not doing this quite quite exactly how I've instructed him, but you're really asking them to, to bring their arms towards the ceiling and get that sort of elevation rather than a flexion because than then, they, yeah, then they, they tend to fixate with their hip flexors and perform yep. a, a rapid hip flexion motion, which is not what we're wanting sort to achieve. Sort of trying to elongate his body, as it were. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And sometimes even <clears> then it's really hard for them to, to, to not use hip flexors. So sometimes I'll just put a big bolster underneath the knees and really get their to relax their legs and then they can isolate their upper abdominals. Yep. Um, really important, particularly in our change in direction sports like um, basketball, volleyball, where they're needing to use upper body action as well to look at rotational abdominal control. Yep. Um, so using things like TheraBands to improve their rotational strength. I use this to lunge and upper body rotation quite a lot to again, increase the complexity of the motion and to get some of that kinetic chain linkage as well. And, you know, you can add things like we mentioned the single leg hip thrust. So you can add things like lunges. I really, mm. really like lunges as an exercise to also develop that lateral pelvic stability and that alignment of the, the hip, knee and ankle in that um, in that. that uh, frontal plane, that sagittal plane, which is really important for um, regaining that uh, that dynamic loading that they'll need for running and, yep. and jumping and landing, etc. Um, single leg deadlift is another fantastic exercise, which is not just a strength exercise, but also a movement quality exercise because they're having to work hard to stand on one leg mm -hmm. and also can help develop their, um, their balance and yeah, proprioceptive. Yeah. And again, you know, we have a lot of evidence that proprioception is aberrant in hip related groin pain. And it makes sense that it also um, should be trained with any uh, clinical entity of groin pain. Yeah, that's quite hard. He's young. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget our other muscle groups. So push-ups, calf raises, working on knee strength, Nordic hamstrings. Yep. Um, some of our other risk factors like ankle proprioception is really important. Developing cardiovascular fitness is obviously an essential part and should be prescriptive with our rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And then looking at preparing them for things like running and returning back to the team-based sports.